Okay, so today I'm working on this 20 year old Westwood. If you're outside of Europe, you probably haven't heard of Westwood. They're built in England and they're fairly popular over here. But this one has got a problem with the engine. Now the only thing I know about this machine is that it, it doesn't run, which doesn't really narrow it down. This has all been removed by somebody else. If you turn the ignition, nothing happens. I think the solenoid is probably bad. Um, but when I turn it over by hand, it's the only test I've done, it doesn't seem to have any compression. Okay, I just stuck the battery on charge. It's completely flat. But um, yeah, the, the head might as well just come off because the problem will always be in here somewhere. Uh, it's usually one of three, three and a half things. Um, the most common thing, I suppose, is a stuck valve, where a valve isn't closing anymore. Usually when it's been left in damp conditions, and the valve is uh, in the out position. Um, it could also be the valve seat has popped out, uh, which would be a little bit more of a pain, but uh, still repairable. Third thing, head gasket. Not quite so common on these engines, that's usually the overhead valves. And finally, which I hope it isn't, uh, excessively worn rings. So anyway, let's just take the head off and we'll, we'll see what we can see. Oh yeah, valve seats popped out on the intake. The head gasket isn't too bad actually. I'm probably gonna have to buy some new parts so we'll get a new head gasket. Yeah, it shouldn't be like that. Should go back in flush, slightly recessed. Not sure if they're original. Well, we've got the usual leaking valve cover gasket. Probably the most common gasket to fail on one of these engines. I get the feeling that somebody has been in here before. Okay, we've got the ground wire, which just goes underneath. I'll take the opportunity to clean everything as well. I'll clean all this up. The good thing about these engines is the valve springs are different colours, so you can distinguish them. The exhaust valve is like a red colour. So there we have it, that's the valve, that's the seat. It's not fully out, but it almost is, but it's still level. So I'm fairly confident that we can just put that back into there. 
and then what you do is you get a punch and with even pressure you uh, you put little notches in and that will that'll keep it in place. This issue is a bit more common on the overhead valves but I don't have a valve seat driver unfortunately so I'm just going to have to attempt to hit it back in. That's in level. And actually, there's also no play, so it must have just been moving because it wasn't, well, it, the seat wasn't in at all. For those of you who like my videos where I don't talk, the restoration videos, I am going to do some more very soon. But I've just got a few repair videos to do. There's quite a bit of carbon in there. I guess it was running for quite a while with that partially, with the seat partially out. Now if this has been an overhead valve engine I could have just had the head on the workbench but now I'm working at an awkward angle to do the centre punching. Okay, that should be alright. The only time I've seen another failure is when uneven pressure is put on it. So, say you're doing quite a bit of punching here and not much here or nothing here. You'll put uneven pressure on the seat itself and it'll probably fracture. But yeah, when I've seen it done like this, there's never usually a problem. But it was already so well in there, it probably wouldn't have moved anyway, but it's just like an extra precaution. I'm now going to lap the valves in. It's actually not too bad at all. Just to make a really good seal. That's the valve lapping paste. You just don't want to get it on the stem. Yeah, you can really see the soot in the back of here. Not much you can really do about it.
I've just checked the valve clearance. That's way too tight. Almost. Okay, that's good. Just install the valves. That seems pretty good. Can't get all the carbon off, otherwise I'd be digging into the piston, but that's fine. Well, I've been hunting around through the gasket sets and I've finally found the valve cover gasket. I've got loads of these sets, full gasket kits, but nearly all of them are complete, uh, but without that one, because that's the one which is needed the most. It kind of reminds me of that Simpsons episode where Homer wants the vanilla, strawberry and chocolate ice cream uh, but only actually eats the chocolate so you keep buying all three just for one hilarious episode makes me want some Neapolitan ice cream anyway, yep, that's the right one Go and find the torque setting. You can see the problem with the R1, it's completely brittle. breaking up into pieces. Right, there we go. Everything's back on, all the uh, metal shroud and stuff. So I'm just gonna 
open the doors, see if it will start. If it does do, I'll take it for a drive. And really all I want to do is just make sure the gearbox works as well. Then in the future I can think about putting a deck on it and of course finding a bonnet as well, or a hood. Okay, so there is some fuel in the tank. It's got enough oil. The fuel tap is on. I have had to disconnect the ground from the machine. Uh, there's some kind of safety switch which isn't working. So that's the only way of turning it off. Just touching that on there. If it starts, that is. Let's give it a go. That's a success. Just needs to change the solenoid. Don't like sparking it near to the fuel, but yeah, the cap's on. Anyway, yeah, there we go. Valve seat issue fix.